In December of 2015, Michael Doherty's Krampus hit the movie theaters. And I gotta say, he hit another home run. Just an amazing film. Think of part National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Christmas Carol, and A Little Gremlins all mixed together is the best way to describe Krampus. Now I gotta give a spoiler alert to anybody who has not watched Krampus. Just stop the video right here and just take off if you don't want to know the ending. Because I'm about to go deep into details. Last warning. And here we go. In the end of Krampus, Max wakes up on Christmas morning. And it appeared everything was just a dream, and his family is very much alive. But then Max finds a Krampus bell as a Christmas present, which means the last two nights wasn't a dream, and his nightmare did indeed happen. Max's family stays quiet and they all give each other a look, which I took it as they were all starting to realize that it wasn't a dream. And here comes the twist of the movie. As the camera pans out of the living room to the outside, we are now in Krampus's lair as he watches the family inside a snow globe. And then as we pan out of the snow globe, we see many different snow globes around the layer, which we all assume is of different people. So what does this mean exactly? Let's get into it. There are two different takes to the ending, the good and the bad. Let's start what I think most of us took it as. I watched this movie with a couple of Horror Squad members, Freddy B and Silverback, and all three of us agreed to the dark ending, which is the bad ending. Which Max and his family are in the underground slash hell, stuck in Krampus' snow globe, repeating Christmas morning every day, which is definitely a mind trip. Now to the good ending, which Max and his family did survive and everybody's alive back at Max's house. The snow globe incident just means that Krampus is keeping an eye on the family in the future so they don't mess up again. So out of the two endings, which is real? In the movie commentary, Michael Doherty confirms that he has heard the two different takes to the ending, but he won't confirm which ending is the real ending. But he actually did give out the true ending if you bought the graphic novel Krampus Shadow St. Nicholas, which is not only written by Michael Doherty, but also Zach Shields and Todd Casey, who happen to be the co-writers of the movie. In Krampus Shadow St. Nicholas, which is an anthology of three tales, which is very much in a trick-or-treat style. By the way, a very good book. I definitely recommend anybody to get this book. Two out of the three main characters from each of the stories met their demise. But on Christmas morning, they were all brought back to life with a second chance. No snow globes. No bad ending. Everybody that died in the book were all alive, celebrating Christmas morning. So there you have it. For all of us that picked the dark ending, we were all wrong. And for those who took the good ending, we're correct. The graphic novel, which is written by the same team that brought you the movie, gave you everything you need to know. Now back to the movie. So the question is, during the flashback scene, why did Max's grandmother, Omi, lose her parents and the whole town villagers who were all dragged into hell? This would definitely support the bad ending. Well, in the movie commentary, Michael Doherty explains how Max was able to pass Krampus' test while his grandmother failed. Remember that scene when Max's whole family are dragged underground by whatever, let's just call it a snow worm. He is then confronted by Krampus while his cousin Stevie is taken away by the elves. This is where Max receives the Krampus bell, and then he's just left all alone. Max could have easily just called it a night and he would have survived, just like his grandmother did during the flashback. But unlike his grandmother, he went looking for Krampus and confronted the creature and tried to save his cousin Stevie and even offered himself to be taken to hell instead of his family. The director Michael Doherty points out in the movie commentary this is where he passed the test and because of his courage is why Max and his family and whoever else was killed were given a second chance of living. This theme is very much the same in the graphic novel where all three of the main characters had to overcome what they hate about Christmas and show courage to allow others to live. With this is where Krampus gives you a second chance. Very much in the Christmas Carol and a Wonderful Life theme, which is exactly what Doherty, Casey, and Shields wanted it to be. Well, there you have it. For the record, I prefer the bad ending twist. To me, the dark twist makes the movie more scarier and better, but I know it's the wrong answer. If you listen carefully to the movie commentary, Doherty, Casey, and Shields have always attended Krampus to be a lighthearted horror movie compared to Trick or Treat. The graphic novel, which all three wrote, would back up the good ending version. So comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. And if you haven't watched Krampus yet, I highly recommend you to check it out. It's definitely one to talk about. Horror Squad rates Michael Doherty's Krampus an 8 out of 10.